Padres Hot Tub, everybody. Craig Elston, Chris Reed, the great decanter. We are here with you. We are recording on MLK Day. Happy MLK Day to everybody. January 15th, 2024. Shout out to the great Martin Luther King. And thank you for a day I didn't have to be at work today. I appreciate that as well. Uh, we've got... We've got a show. We've got a show today. We, we're going to do a show. The Padres aren't helping us. They're really kind of not doing their part on a content generation standpoint. They're doing nothing and asking us to keep posting up week after week and comment on their nothingness in new, unique, different, and interesting and creative ways. And we shall endeavor to do so again today on a show I entitled Waiting on the World to Change. We keep on waiting, waiting on the world to change. Some housekeeping. New Pods Above replacement episode coming tomorrow. Rafi, tell us all about it. Uh, I'll tell you about it. I don't know if it's coming tomorrow because I have a new okay. job and I'm trying to figure it out my edit schedule. But I it's going to come out it's very soon. And it's recorded. It's in the can. It's just on my computer. And it's all about John and I, mostly John because John is very smart, talking about the 2024 bullpen and specifically the concerns we have in its construction. Um, I think that John has some very clever ideas in terms of solutions that we can use to fix it, inspired by some other successful teams of late. Uh, and uh, we hammer something that we've been hammering at the very end uh, for quite some time, including on this show, uh, about a certain man whose name might rhyme with Cauldron. Um, okay. so you have that to look forward to, uh, and, uh, yeah, that'll be on YouTube. Uh, and we, you know, obviously we always push people to watch the pods of replacements on YouTube if you can, because we're putting up, you know, videos and, and, you know, stats and stuff that, you know, it's, it's great if you can th follow the numbers in your head, but I'm someone who's a little bit more of a visual learner and I like looking at the charts. So if you, that's you too, c come watch on YouTube. It's, it's a fun time. Absolutely. I was just trying to look it up. Where are we? We are like still in the 900s approaching a thousand for our our we were over 960 when i last saw oh yeah okay we're getting we're, we're getting close so hey if you happen to be listening to the show today and you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel please subscribe to our youtube channel while you're there subscribe to the 97.3 the fan uh youtube channel as well did you know that youtube is the number one platform for podcasts worldwide factually it is and it's a great place to not only listen to this show, watch this show, uh, but also to watch, listen to Pods Above Replacement and to watch, listen, Annie and Elston, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. So YouTube, we love it, even though I'm now staring at webcams over 20 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> they, they also have videos on how string cheese is made. Oh, we... There are lots of videos on YouTube. <laughs> Let's start I made you watch them. one <laughs> this week. Episode. We yeah. did it. I, I made you watch one this week, uh, Chris. Oh, boy, did you. <laughs> Running on empty food <laughs> review. My son is now hooked on that, and we watched like three today. So just so you know. Let me know place, when he, he reviews something good, because I want to see him enthusiastic, because he ate a garbage Burger King chicken sandwich, and, you know, it was garbage. He was, <laughs> I literally am going to wear a t-shirt that I'm getting from him after Padre's losses on Annie and Elston, <laughs> which says, my disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> That's solid. I, I already but love I his merch. Yeah, but I digress. Report of the week. Check it out after you're done watching our show, please, on YouTube. But please subscribe uh, on YouTube. And also the best way to possibly support the show, if you are somebody who has always enjoyed Padre's Hot Tub all the way back to myself and John Gennaro, and you love what we're doing and you appreciate the fact that we continue to do an independent Padre's podcast, even though all of us have different walks of life, that could allow us to, in each each and every one of us, say, you know what, we're going to walk away from this, and we love you all, Padres fans. We continue to show up for you every single week, uh, doing this above and beyond what we do in our regular lives. So if you if you like that, if you like the fact that we keep doing this show, if you like the content that we create, 
Uh, the best way you can support us is to go to patreon.com slash Padres Hot Tub, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Padres Hot Tub. Uh, and for as low as $5 a month, you can support this show. You can not only, we give you stuff. It's not just supporting the show. You get free episodes. You get ad-free episodes. You get the opportunity to be in our Discord, which is currently, uh, hang on, let me check the stats. 26.4 times better than being on X. <laughs> so it's uh, it, it fluctuates. It fluctuates depending yeah, on how many times Tevin uh, <laughs> Tevin posts uh, on a given day. But 26.4 is where it stands right now in the off season. So just that alone, like that that idiot site asks you to pay eight dollars to make it slightly less shitty. Um, and for five dollars, you get like a bunch of things plus a social forum that is 26.4 times better than what you'll find elsewhere. So patreon.com slash Padres hot tub. Okay, guys, uh, since we last recorded, one thing happened. For the Padres. Well, the, the Padres had international signing day. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, thinking yeah. about the, the baseball free agent market. Okay. The place where hopes and dreams are made. Oh yeah. Uh one thing happened since our last podcast, which is the the Giants signed Jordan Hicks to a four year, forty four million dollar contract. Uh, Jordan Hicks, who I don't think has really ever actually been like good, like like really good in baseball. He has always been a spectacular show pony. Look at that fastball. He's like Rob Friedman's wonderkind for pitching Ninja. 104, holy crap. Like all the emojis. But usually that 104 is at someone's shoe tops uh, or it's six feet above the strike zone. Hicks has never been truly effective. He's been good at times. Like he was pretty damn good with Toronto at moments last year. Uh, the one time the Cardinals tried to make him a starter, he had eight, uh, six starts, six or eight starts, and then he got hurt. And the Giants... Signed him to be a starter. I'm like, I'm all for it, boys. Uh, if, if they've got, you know, Farhan Zaidi magic up there and he becomes an all-star, you know, mark it down January 15th, Craig wrong, put it in the list, put it in the bucket. But uh, I'm thinking he's going to be like kind of fun to hit against or walking everybody uh, as a starter. Yeah, I can't wait to see Bob Melvin leave him in any in too long. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah i don't know uh i am just like look, pouring over his stats right now he he was pretty decent last year uh for uh toronto and st louis i uh, put up a 3.22 fip uh over 65 innings but i mean like any reliever that you're building up to a starter i mean like how realistically like how many innings can jordan hicks even throw next year without putting him at an insane amount of risk like 100 and 20 is that like uh, i think that that's probably realistic but also I think that's optimistic yeah i mean maybe yeah he, he hasn't thrown more than 77 innings in a season so uh i don't know how you make that jump uh and uh he certainly i mean he's not old by any stretch of the imagination but he's uh 27 so you know that's a that's a, a, a certainly a time to be making this transition so i don't know it's like it, it's kind of like I I don't understand the Giants. Like I'm really bored with us right now, but the Giants feel like they're kind of like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, so to speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like between like the Robbie Ray trade that they made, and it's like they're like they clearly and the Jung Hoo Lee signing way overpay, where they're like they clearly want to compete and want to spend money, but they're like there's like a, a level that of that they're not willing to go to, and that's actually the the level that they need to to become a markedly different team, if that makes sense. So I they kind of puzzle me watching them from and I'm kind of glad we're not doing what they're doing, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah we kind of almost feel chargerish, don't they, Chris, in terms <laughs> of like we're spending money like but we didn't get our number one. You know, because like the number yeah. one that they're always the bridesmaid on every big free agent. Yeah, and they're you know they did what the 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 Chargers kind of did is they they kind of got the mid range coach slash manager. They didn't pay top dollar for Craig Council or anything, and they're relying on their whiz kid GM to to field the team of of matchups. I uh, 
I think it's kind of interesting that the, we, the Padres got ripped for paying Xander Bogarts too much money, you know, for overpaying by 60, $70 million. But that's exactly what the Giants need to do to get one of these guys, to get Bellinger or, or um, you know, uh, Jordan Montgomery or Blake Snell. They, they need to pony up because they're a California team with the taxes. That's a, a, a financial liability that all the California teams have, and that's fine. Some teams defer the money to, to make it go away, but not everybody gets to do that. So like not they got to pony up and they're, they're trying not to, they're trying to do it on the margins. They're, they're, you know, with the internationals and, uh, with, with converting two pitch relievers into starting pitchers, two pitch relievers that are, have these power arms that probably won't hold up throwing 90 pitches a game. I just, I don't see it. Like you, you got to pick a lane. I, I just want to take this moment to announce that Chris is going to be launching a, a, a podcast on our on our network. Uh, it's uh, sponsored by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. We're really excited uh, for the contributions, excited to work with them. Uh, so uh, really, yeah, uh, appreciate all the work you've been putting into Chris. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be going over uh, deductions you can take and uh, uh, how to how to put your children on your company's payroll. So yes. That- Every yes. every cent you Prop have 13. coming in. Yeah. This week on Prop 13, we ask number 13, Manny Machado, for his best <laughs> ideas <laughs> on avoiding state taxes. Oh, we need the season to start so badly, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I mean, I'm not kidding. We do. Um, the only thing I find... So, like, I think Jordan Hicks is... And, and I, I know I said this on any and else in this week, too, but we're in this really shitty familiar position of watching the free agent market as opposed to participating in it and having the uh, bitter hollow pleasures of going like, well, I wouldn't have done that. You know, it's like, that's kind of like our, all the pleasure we can derive right now. (laughs) Seems a little rich for me. (laughs) And, and that's been the giants, right? The, the Lee signing, no Hicks, like no, Uh, even Teoscar Hernandez. No, uh, Bob Nightingale finally got around to noting that in 2039, the Dodgers are going to pay, I think it's $89.5 million to oh four goodness. players. It's crazy who aren't on their team. Who won't, they'll all be in their upper 40s uh, at, at, at that point. But OK, the only thing I found interesting about the Giants signing Jordan Hicks is some reporting which said that the signing of Jordan Hicks was a pivot away from Blake Snell. That Blake Snell slash Scott Boris is holding a line. And that line is pay me till I'm 39 and pay me $240 million. Eight Hmm. years, $240 million. And that the Yankees were all over Blake Snell. And Scott Boris said, yep, eight years, $240 million. And they said, oh, Marcus Stroman, let's take a visit to Florida and let's have a sit down lunch with Marcus Stroman and find out all the things in his head that motivate him. And sure enough, two years and under $40 million, we'll get this contract done. And they signed that Blake uh, and Jordan Hicks signs his deal in San Francisco and Blake Snell winds up still on the market, chasing a deal that it appears all of Major League Baseball is smart enough to know he shouldn't get. Uh, And like, I haven't seen one. No, I will take that back. Like I've seen one or two pro sign Blake Snell think pieces in national baseball. And they're always as a reaction to all of the, no one should sign Blake Snell. He won't throw 180 innings, et cetera, et cetera. uh, Reporting that's around him. It just, Cy Young doesn't get you what it used to Blake. So sorry, man. I don't blame Scott Boris for trying to make that line considering Yoshinobu just uh, Yamamoto just got way more than that having never thrown an MLB pitch. Like I see where they're coming from. Uh but Blake Snell at age 39 is a big big wolf. And yeah. even at age 37 is a big wolf. Um I I think they kind of got to choose the the AAV or the years on that because Yikes. No, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't add up even for a guy who loves Blake Snell and wants to see him, you know, get that bag as big as he possibly can. 
uh, yeah. I mean, again, it just always comes down to Blake Snell just turned 31. Yamamoto's 25. Uh, you know, Yamamoto's going to put up four wins for the next half decade at least. That's it. <laughs> That's it. There, there it goes. I loved, uh, I saw a post on X that my buddy Ryan Young sent me, and it was, uh, what's the guy, Gangnam Style? What's, what's his name? Um, oh, Sai. Yeah. Sai. Yeah. It was, you know, Sai like crouching uh, below the I stage yeah. on his platform and then shooting up the stage. And, and the caption was Blake Snell showing up in Korea for the Padres after he signs his discount deal. And like the market, I- I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. The market will never get to the point where nope. the 2024 San Diego Padres can afford Blake Snell. If he would like to sign a one year, $4 million deal <laughs> with the San Diego Padres <laughs> on a make deal. Good, <laughs> Approve it, deal <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then we are here for you, Blake, as as that home of last refuge. But short of that, Blake Snell is signing somewhere else, and I, I still, I, I really hope it's the American League. Uh, I, I'm still partial to the Angels because, first of all, they make mistakes, and second of all, it'd be close <laughs> enough. <if> I, <laughs> you know, like if I wanted to, I would go see them. So. Uh, uh, I want it to know. be the Mariners, so they trade us a young pitcher. Oh, well, that would be fine, too. Yeah, it's not, okay. Ooh, maybe that's tomorrow's Let's Make a Trade on any and else. Maybe I'll do Ooh. Seattle. Try and figure out a Seattle trade. Those always work out great for us. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, Jerry <laughs> has a history of burning us quite good, but they've just got quite a stable of young arms and, and a weird organizational thing going on right now. Like. I, yeah, I don't. They're 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 a, a opaque box with a mystery inside of it. Uh, here's the bottom line, guys: the top free agents are all unsigned. Uh, the market had to wait for the two big fish, Otani and Yamamoto, and instead of there being a free flow after that, the market stayed choked because the remaining top like five free agents are all represented by the same guy, Scott Boris. So this is going to drag. This is going to drag out. Yeah. Bellinger, Chapman, Hader, even down below that, J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, like all the way down. And this is for us in the Padres content room. This is just bad news because <laughs> the longer that is something you very much appreciate as, a, as an ocean guy, Chris, some sedimentary. Mariner. Yeah, a mariner, thank you. <laughs> Is that a better term than an ocean guy? <laughs> and are you sure? Are you sure it is? Um, you know, here in the writer's room. Um, the longer the top of the market remains unsettled, and we wait for the sediment to drift to the bottom of the sea, us bottom scrapers, we have to wait. We have to wait for the sediment to get down there. And it, as long as the yeah. top of the market is is still up in the ocean, we don't get to go find that guy who fell all the way through to the floor. Yeah, we're spider crabs just waiting on that whale carcass. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get past ocean guy. I'm still stuck on that. <laughs> <laughs> so many other words you could have used. <laughs> you said ocean guy. Effective. <laughs> like <laughs> You're an ocean guy. <laughs> Rafi, can I tell you, man? I what, didn't I say to you guys yet last week? Physical stamina, mental <laughs> stamina, yeah. creative stamina. I am struggling with mental stamina, bro. Today I couldn't <laughs> think of the word cabinet. Like I, I was, it was the same <laughs> thing. Like I was talking to my buddy Chris in the golf course. I'm like doors, that thing doors. you put stuff in it. It's got doors and things. There's cans behind it. Boxes. Ocean guy. <laughs> it's an ocean guy that was aquaman they it was a process to get to that name okay <laughs> there were alternate titles that's all i'm saying there were levels to this i do um, get confused for jace momoa quite frequently craig so you're forgetting <laughs> all right on to the thing that happened today everyone knew this would happen it's january 15th and leo devries is a san diego padre uh in the Dominican, Leo and his friends had a little car parade today. 
after he signed for four plus million dollars, which I would absolutely do as well. I would have a car parade um, if I signed <laughs> anything for four million dollars. I'd be like, friends, let's drive down La Mesa Boulevard. Let's rent some convertibles. <laughs> <laughs> Getting oh, on the heat to live. Is is uh is the Fuddrucker still in Grossmont Center? Because that's no. where I that's Wait, the destination yeah. for the parade for me. We, yeah. we ain't stopping until we get to Fuddruckers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so hey, great. We, we talked about him last week. Later Vries is in. People are saying, is he gonna start at Lake Elsinore like Salas? I think he probably won't. I think he'll probably start at extended spring training. But just the fact that they're willing to bring him stateside. For his age 17 year you know it's exciting now put him in the box and, and let's see what happens you know they sign some other guys for a few thousand dollars here and there and all know their names if they ever get to high a you know it's a process but uh great Laird of Reese. the only other let's notable go. name was humberto which is an amazing name humberto cruz and he's out of mexico and that's why i'm rooting for him we need more more of a Mexican presence on the San Diego Padres uh, in my O. Yeah. Um, Umberto. 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 Umberto Cruz. I love uh, it. I, uh, it's bad news, unfortunately, for him that uh, because the Padres don't have a great track, they trade all of their Mexican <laughs> young stars. Yeah. So I look forward to Umberto Cruz tearing it up for another team in five years. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think the thing about... Uh, Okay, hang on. His full name is Leo Dallis. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Leo, Leo Dallis. So, De Vries. so if, say, if someone says Leo, they're not good. It's Leo. Le okay. Leo Dallas, not not Leo Dallas. Leo Dallas. Leo, Leo Dallas de Vries. De Vries. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's just worth reading this paragraph that was already circulated in some Padre circles. But if you haven't heard it already, Eric Loggenhagen and his international prospect uh, dedicated one whole paragraph. Only player who got a whole paragraph to Leo. And he ba they basically said, Note that Leo Dallas de Vries is in a tier of his own atop the class. I had a non-Padre scouting executive tell me I should quit this exercise and just write a profile about de Vries, who is one of the most talented prospects to come along in the last five to ten years. The way de Vries' report have trended over the last year suggests he may end up at second base eventually, but the hit and power combo is going to clear that bar pretty easily. It's uncommon for me to have a new international prospect on the top 100 list straight away, but DeVries' reports are strong enough that I'm compelled to have him toward the back of that list. Ethan Salas wasn't on the top 100 to start, all right? Wow. Like, he had to have a whole season to prove it, you know, and then now, obviously, he's a top 10 prospect, but uh, that is, you know, a, a glowing, glowing, glowing uh, review and, and report, so... Uh, I'm really, really excited to see this kid. And, I, you know, the other thing, again, patience, like it, it actually benefits us and behooves us if he doesn't come up like super quickly because like we have Jackson Merrill that's supposed to be in that slot and this kid's yeah. only 17. And if he didn't make it up until he was 21 or 22, which is a very normal age for someone to come up to the big leagues, like that would be a good thing. So, uh, uh, yeah, but very exciting and uh, a small thing for us to talk about. The selfish part of me hopes he's in Lake Elsinore this year, just so I can take Seeger to go see him. Uh, Umberto Cruz, it should be noted, is Lonnen Hagen's number 24 prospect from this year's class. So, But the top pitcher. Cool. Top pitcher, yeah. Yep. The top, so we got the top position player and the top pitcher from this year's international from class. From him, yeah. Yeah. Does AJ Preller do anything better than this? No. At least the hype part of it, no. <laughs> like, That's what I mean. Like, yeah. thrash the bushes, come up with a big signing. Everyone, like, it earn universal praise from the prospect community. Everyone gets fired up, mad helium. And then now we got to wait. Uh, but you know, the thing is, Priller's also a little impatient because these are the things he loves. So it's like, helium, helium. Starts in high, starts in low A. Oh, he's up to high A. Look at that. Like, yeah, especially those low rung parts of, of the climb where he knows that his prospect is going to be able to clear the bar with athleticism. There is nothing better for Preller than 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 this. And I look forward to going down the road with Leo DeVries. And hopefully it's a super, super fun road. The funnest road was Tatis. Look what he's doing in A. Look what he's doing in double A. Holy crap, here he comes. And then he was there. 
So I I hope, I wish, and now vaya con Dios, Leo de Vries, let's hope everything works out uh, great. Um, I'm doing a thing on Annie and Elston every single day, and I have to come up with the one for tomorrow. So if you guys would like to share some great ideas with me, it's cool. It's called Let's Make a Trade, um, because honestly, the closer we get here, the writing's on the wall for the 2024 Padres. We're going to be one of of three teams right now. We're going to be a team that puts some placeholders out for several major league positions at the start of 2024 on the cheap with a payroll that probably doesn't even get to $170 million, uh, stays under the CBT, and will spend the year getting excited for minor league prospect reports, hopeful for a midseason call-up, and praying for everything to be turned to 11 for our superstars, for everything to go well and for us to compete for a wild card spot. Uh, maybe we don't even get placeholders. Maybe we start Jackson Merrill and Jacob Marcy and Graham Pauly as major league opening day starters and have a very different year. For good or ill, probably ill, a very different year. Uh, or. AJ Preller fights to save his job and makes a trade out of the farm system that he has built up once again and just bolstered again with Leo DeVries and does that to get quality, top-end, controllable players that can keep us under the CBT and also keep us in the competition discussion for the National League in 2024. My question to you, gentlemen, how deep are you willing to cut? What or who, to what level are you willing to part from the Padre system in order to make this club exciting in 2024? Chris, do you have one to start or should I... No, I, I'm I'm curious okay. on your thoughts, Rafi, because you really approach prospects from a, you know, an informed place of value, and they are so incredibly valuable in today's game. So I kind of want to hear where you're going. So the the question was, who do you part with to improve the team in 2024? Do I just have I, I have that specific wording correct? Yeah, yeah. Who are the po- who are the prospects, or who is the prospect you're willing to part with to make this team better? now okay i want to emphasize that part of the question that i repeated back to you who would i trade to make the team better in 2024 because that's not if if i'm taking the long view of this organization i wouldn't trade this player now because i think that they have too much upside um i would go with dylan lesko um and i'll tell you why the error bars are too high still he could be Nothing yeah. like, and he also could be a, a, an ace or two starter one day. And I, you know, will eat my shorts and everything like that. And I'm not saying that I doubt him. I'm just saying that like guy, the, the other prospects who you would trade theoretically, Drew Thorpe, uh, Jairo Iriarte, Adam Mazur, like those are all guys who can make an impact on the team this year. And probably we will need them. And so like, if you're trading a guy like, like I'm even hesitant to say Jacob Marcy, who's like kind of the one that, you know, has some hype around him, but you know, guys like long and Hagen don't buy into him. And so, you know, depending on who you're getting back, you know, obviously that's, it's always like, wait, who would you be willing to trade? What's well, like, well, like, you know, <laughs> what's the trade, sure. you know, like, sure. it's like, right. that's, it's always, always kind of hard to always. take this to make right. that one sided conversation. But like, I'm not sure based on, everything we've heard from the team that like we can go without Jacob Marcy this year. Like it just doesn't seem like they're spending money on anyone. So who is the player who could get you something substantial back in no way is going to contribute to the team in 2024. And like, you also would not be insane for trading him. Like I'm not suggesting we trade Salas or Merrill or anything like that. Like, uh, you know, Merrill's brought, maybe there's an argument there because he's quote unquote blocked based on the current 2024 roster. But uh, he's not someone who I have any interest in trading because I really do think he could come up and make an impact. And, you know, even playing in left field, which is probably not the best thing for him, but like he could do that. Um, 
but yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna stick with Lesko. Um, uh, Long and Hagen downgraded him from a 60 to a 55 uh, future value, or excuse me, to a, uh, from a 55 to a 50 future right. value ranking, and uh, you know, it basically says that his curveball, uh, kind of like Lucas Giolito's was for a while, is just not uh not doing it uh and d- d- doesn't have that kind of uh put away ability that it's going to need to succeed in the major leagues uh when guys are going to be able to pick it up so um i don't know like he, he he the error bars are too wide so so that's my argument uh i couldn't agree more rafi that's exactly the guy the highest one for me because he is third on some of our rankings that less go still there and others snellings above him and he's four but he is a 50 starting pitcher and i think of the clubs that we could get controllable assets for this year next and maybe the year after like say the orioles those teams are going to covet young pitching to a degree that his value will bring us something back where you know iriarte and mazer uh, they they have tools to pitch in the bigs, but they don't have like that hype, that 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 pedigree that Lesko has. And like you guys constantly say, there's no such thing as a pitching prospect. We've seen Correct. them come and go over the past 20 years of Padres baseball, you know, and very little to show for it. You know, when Chris Paddock and uh, <laughs> Mackenzie Gore are like near the top of the list. I, I don't have a lot of faith in right now how they're developing young pitchers. So if another team wants to do it and think that they can have the ace in three, four years, meanwhile, we have a controllable major league caliber. Uh, you know, if we're talking Baltimore, you might be able to get Cedric Mullins out of them. You know, uh, that's the type of guy you might bring back with a let's go headlining package. So that is also my guy, Rafi. It is fascinating, guys, that in the last few years, in the uh, you know continuing pursuit of both analytical success and content for Major League Baseball, that now there is a matrix that makes it so much easier for a Major League general manager to move his prospects for big league controllable value because of the exact same things, Rafi, you've just been talking about, right? Future value, Eric Long and Hagen's rating and then that rating has a correlation to surplus value and the cash that this player is worth and and the number that pops up in the trade simulator and everything else not that big league gms use the trade simulator nonetheless that you know 30 years ago was just like well is this prospect good what do the scouts have to say somebody could make an individual determination like i think this kid is amazing and just be wrong but I'm driving at something here, which is in today's market where this matrix exists for evaluation and future value, you almost are better off trading your prospects always, aren't you? Because yeah, now you're speaking my language, Craig. you, you, You get value for assumed value. You get value in exchange for future value, potential value. And as often as not, that value disappears. Now, if you do it all the time, you get to where the 2023 Padres yeah. were. Yeah. You which is Odor. no depth. All, Rugnet Odor, Nelson Cruz, yeah. you know, Gary Sanchez to the rescue, and, uh, you know, all $8 million pitchers on your roster. Uh, that's where you get. So you can't do it constantly, but I just don't think. I I not think I I really believe that the old school, just keep them all, bring them all up out of every five, one's going to pop. And that it just doesn't, it's not going to be the recipe for the Padres to win in any time soon in the national league. Whereas like for this team in 2024 to win, you could make a trade. That would make this team better. Like guaranteed, you could make a trade that could make this team better. So now I'm going to answer the question that I I posed to both of you, and I'm going to go up a ladder, three rungs. Okay. 
I believe Jacob Marcy is in a Preller pump and dump right now. Yeah. And I talked about it on the radio, and I'll say the same thing on the show here. I think the fact that Preller is mentioning him by name, I think the fact that Marcy is climbing up these lists is on purpose. I think it's intentional. Uh, And when you see anything like Long and Hagen's report, like, well, maybe eh, eh, that's your reminder. Like, it's not a sure thing. The guy hit the Arizona Fall League. He was in double A for a minute. Like, there's there's no guarantee this guy's even going to be a big leaguer. He could be Paul McAnulty. Like, at some point, Paul McAnulty had great numbers in the minor leagues, you know? And, and I'm, it's not exact one-to-one comparison. I understand that. But my point being, I think he's pumping and dumping him. So that Marcy is the first one on my list. I'm willing to trade Jacob Marcy today for, for someone else. Let's go to the next rung up. And I completely agree with both of you. We've got a lot right now, which we didn't a year ago, a lot of interesting, intriguing young arms that are a year away. And Lesko's not a year away. Lesko's a couple of years away, probably, maybe two or three. And he hasn't gotten to the point in his career where he could hit a wall and just be like, oh, nope, that's not the guy. Shows up in El Paso with a six and a half ERA over 17 starts and giving up a, a homer and a half per per nine innings. And you're just like, well, I don't know. Uh, so I 100% think he has value in a deal going back. He and Marcy combined start to really get you someplace, right? Like if you're trading Lesko and Marcy in a trade together, you're getting something back now. Which brings me to the top rung of the ladder, guys. And I really want to, I want, this is the last thing I'd kind of like to dive in with you guys. It's painfully clear that there is a logjam that must be resolved. Xander Bogarts is a shortstop. Hassan Kim is a shortstop. Jake Cronenworth is a second baseman. Hassan Kim is playing second base because Xander Bogarts is a shortstop. <laughs> Jake Cronenworth is playing first base because Hassan Kim is being a second baseman. And Jackson Merrill is a shortstop who's played some second base. The situation where we throw an infielder into the outfield is generally shitty. It it basically doesn't work almost every time. And I just want to remind you of a guy named Adam Frazier, who isn't a great player, but like at second base, hitting 300 with a little bit of power, like that's pretty much what Jackson Merrill is is comping out to right now. Not directly to Adam Frazier, but like a line drive stick who can hit to all fields. I mean, Adam Frazier was an all star. Like that's a- well, absolutely, he's not a bad player. Yeah, but like if you put him in left field, he's a pretty bad player. Like even the best version of him isn't a good left fielder. You know, he's like wandering around in a position he doesn't play to hit 300 with 10 homers, maybe, or 15 homers. Like, that's not a great player. That's a part-time player in the outfield. That's not a franchise player. So my point is, one of these three guys has to get traded. Like, you either trade ha Kim to make this team better, give Jake Cronenworth second base, and then what are you doing with Merrill the next year? Are you putting him at shortstop? Are you putting Xander Bogarts at first base at that point? You still have an issue. Even if you trade Kim a year from now, you still have an issue. If you trade Cronenworth, then okay, Kim plays second base this year. Merrill plays second base next year. That makes sense. Or if you trade Merrill, Jay Cronenworth is our second baseman. And Hassan Kim is going to play on this team in his role, utility, third base, shortstop, second base, for the remainder of this year. And then we'll get a first round pick for him, uh, you know, compensation pick at the end of the year. One of these three things has to happen. You can't keep all of these guys. I would much rather attach Jacob Cronenworth and his contract in that hypothetical big Lesko Marcy deal where he's eating into the value of that a little bit, then, then lose Merrill just because the control. And I do think that his tools will 
play in today's game with the the stolen bases, with uh, balls in play being more at a premium. Uh, I, I, I like that hit tool, and I know that's not where you know the the experts of the game like it. I know they like big exit velocities, perfect launch angle, that raw power. And, and J, uh, you know, Jackson Merrill hasn't quite shown that, even though it's gotten better since he gotten into the system. Yeah, I, I would rather, uh, I, I'd rather keep him, Craig. Who is the best prospect that you would give up to get rid of the Cronenworth contract? Maybe let's go. <laughs> I mean, let's go. So, so something go- we're just going to pile on Dylan. This is now traders <laughs> hive mind at the table. Like, oh, someone <laughs> said let's go. I'm picking let's go. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, but we can compare let's go to Snelling. You know, Snelling has already had success at mid range levels of the minor leagues. And uh, he may not have the fastball that let's go has, but he has better control this far and he's able to get guys out without walking them that let's go hasn't shown yeah i you know i just feel like really without this what you know w- without a trade what are we actually going to agree we're gonna talk ourselves into the tapia pro far to tease outfield here's our here's our team current all right, it's going to be Profar on left, Tappy in center, Tatis in right, Kim at third, Bogarts at short, second base, Cronenworth, first base, Joseph Votto, Luis Camposano, the catcher, and like, I don't know, we'll, we'll throw a first base, we'll throw a DH in there, we'll, we'll rotate some random ass DH, David Dahl type. Uh, on the team, but I, I think we're going to sign Joey Votto for a $1 million spray deal, Nelson Cruz style, and, and sign a couple of scrap heaps if we don't make a trade. And then DFA Joey Votto, Nelson Cruz style. <laughs> <laughs> in July. Yeah, and just pick the date. Um, like, we'll do that on the podcast for the Votto signing. We'll be like, pick the date that we DFA Joey Votto, and then we'll all do a little bet. Am I crazy if I think that that team... Is better than the Giants, better than far better than the Rockies, and at least competes against the Diamondbacks. I don't know if you're crazy or not. I don't know where all the slider bars land on people's output seasons, but that is the last topic of the show. Are we just are we in Doomerville? Like, are we permanently living in Doomerville? This has been the bleakest winter. And we're waiting on the world to change and nothing's been changing. And so week after week, it feels bleaker, even though nothing actually changed. You know, it, things just feel bleaker because time passes without news. So I don't know. I'd love, Rafi, for you to talk me into a right now the Padres can win 87 games discussion and I'll, I'll happily entertain it. Uh, it's simple and we had it here, uh, right now the Padres, according to projections are going to win 85 games, according to Fangraph's depth charts. Uh, do you think that they're going to add two wins to the roster before opening day? I think probably through trade or through signing in some way there's 87 wins. We've underperformed our projection in literally every AJ Preller season. Yes. Just want to toss that in. There. But Mike Schilt has never been our manager in an AJ Preller season. Mike Schilt has never been our manager never in an AJ manager. season. So we can just put that decade aside and say that we're going to do it. Um, I like that. Here's, a, here's another one for you. Uh, we were historically on clutch last year. We were 10 and a half wins on clutch. Uh, and you go to my YouTube video uh, if you haven't watched it already. To, watch, to, to, to learn all about that. And you might say, well, Rafey, Juan Soto isn't here, and he was a big part of the offense last year. And that is true. But Juan Soto was actually like, uh, he, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he was clutch, but he was the least unclutch, if that makes sense, of all of our starters. He was the one who was the, who was the least affected by this like weird, screwy year that we had. It was guys like Tatis and Machado and Bogarts who really, uh, you know, w- were unclutch in the, in the sense of the stat. And that statistic is incredibly based on variance and doesn't tend to carry over. And like basically every team that has been in that historic unclutch ranking the next year, they regress to some much greater win total. So uh, I I don't, you know, is the team worse? Yes. 
but also, you know, you're taking a team that on paper should have won like 92, 93 games last year, and you're taking away Juan Soto, and that puts them at what? 87 wins? <laughs> like yeah. something like that? Like, eh? Like, I ultimately, like, I can't control the future. I can't control baseball. Like, but all you can do is put together a team on paper that's going to perform in the way it's supposed to perform. And then everything else via con Dios, you know? And like last year, God was not with us. No. <laughs> and, and maybe <laughs> this year he will be. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that, that's, that, that's as much as I can argue right now. Mysticism and regression to the mean. <laughs> are both that's you know, baseball you, know, that, yeah, you just baby. talked about baseball that's, that's 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 yeah that's why this sport is stupid no one should watch yeah. like we've got a fucking bag of magic beans and we're in here going like well <laughs> sounds good to me i look i i think the best thing that's happening for the padres right now um <laughs> is the lowering of expectations expectations yeah. are the thief of joy we came into last year, each and every one of us in this room picked 95 wins as our median for the club. They horrifically underperformed. They fell under the weight of their expectations. And I'm here to tell you guys, the Padres will be, barring a big trade, a big trade, a shock the system trade, the Padres will be picked to finish fourth this year. They will be picked across baseball to finish behind the Giants for the simple reason of activity levels. Yeah. For the simple reason of the Giants did things and the Padres didn't. Now, the, the quants, Rafi, won't necessarily do that. But when you see that ESPN page where everyone makes their predictions, all the writers and all the different Yahoos make their, including at Yahoo, uh, make their predictions. If things stay the same, the Padres will be picked to finish fourth this year. They fought their way out of fourth at the end of last year. Let us not forget. They were in fourth in September last year, and they and they fought their way out of it. But that's kind of a good spot for Mike Schilt to do yeah. his Shilton magic and, and to, to create the us against the world. We're an underdog. Xander Bogarts, they think you're shit. Manny Machado, they think you're shit. You know, like, that's a way better place psychically for the Padres to be psychologically, not psychically. <laughs> psychically would know, be knowing where everything, you know. It's knowing what pitch is coming. That's, that's not a. Yes, that would be way better. Um, trash can, bang, bang. Um, you know, psychologically, that's a way better spot for this franchise to be forgotten, underdog. No one thinks we can win. That's good that that, you know, us all going in going like, well, I don't know. We'll see. We're going to feel great when the team's five and four, you know, like, all right. All right. Maybe we're OK. Last year, five and four. We're like, well, when's the six game winning streak coming? Mm -hmm. When's the when are we going to get to 14 and four? When are we going to get to 21 and seven? When are we going to get to those real hot numbers that our great team is supposed to be. And we never got there, of course. Um, so that that's the thing I'm going to hang on to is that expectations of the thief of joy. And we have an opportunity for joy this year. <laughs> Son's expectation. Yeah. Uh, humble pie can, can, uh, can nourish you in, in ways that, uh, um, you know, confidence or cockiness or swag or can't. And, uh, when this team's playing well, that that stuff can come around organically. But for a long time, it feels like the team has tried to, you know, just staple on some swagger and confidence or pay for it. And it hasn't worked. Um, and Mike Schilt, a dude who is a legend, you know, they'll keep talking about it. He's a baseball man. He's an organization man. Uh, I can see that creating a different type of culture, a different kind of atmosphere in the clubhouse. And, you know, we talked about how the club didn't have accountability last year. Maybe that changes. Yeah. Hasn't, I, I just want to say anytime that the national media has been like, we'll look out for the Padres yeah. hasn't worked. No. <laughs> so maybe, yeah, maybe a little you. bit of the other, of the other direction is good for us. And the very last thing I'll say is that I'm, I'm really in on Mike Schilt. Yeah. You know, uh, on the radio show, I got a chance to talk to him. This that was week. awesome, uh, by Kevin the way. AC. I very much enjoyed that. 
Thank, I thought Andy did a great job too. And, yep. and, uh, Kevin AC wrote like, I think a 250,000 word, uh, profile <laughs> on Mike Schilt. <laughs> what kind it of jelly like the he liked on his sports toast? section. Uh, it was it was wild the the <laughs> level of depth. I mean, Bob Melvin never even got close to this, uh, not even not even within arm's reach of this. But uh, it, as much of a hagiography hey as that piece was, and I mean it was a hagiography. Hey uh, as much as it was, like I'm in on this guy. Like I 100 percent believe to the bottom of my soul that Mike Schilt is committed to the San Diego Padres success in 2024. And I'm not saying Bob Melvin wasn't. I'm saying I truly believe Mike Schilt is like it oozes out of everything he does. He is going to pour his fucking everything into this role. Bob Melvin was our manager for a couple of years, and now he's a manager for a different team. He's, he's going to be on his fifth team as manager, fourth or fifth team as manager. And I'm not dissing him. I liked him. I ended a show like saying yeah. protect Bob Melvin. You know, uh, I think he's a good manager, but it didn't work here. It didn't work out here for whatever reason. It didn't work out here. And Schilt is a dude. I am like really excited to see succeed. A note for the listener, a hey geography is the writing, uh, uh, the lives of the saints is where it comes from. It is a biography that idolizes its subject and a uh, hey geography, which is designed to serve a political agenda. I didn't know that yes, word, Craig. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. There you go. L- little vocab expands for the end of the show. Ocean guy. That's got to be a segment on your show. The word of the day. Hey, geography. Ocean guy. Ocean guy. <laughs> <laughs> I come up with all the good words. I've got all the good words. The best words. As, 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 the, I use the best words. Indeed. Padre hot tub. AJ. 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 Please. 